สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today is another opportune moment to do a remake of one of my all-time favorite soups. We are remaking t o m k a k a i or this chicken coconut g a l a n g a l soup. It's super world famous. You know it. And if you've tried my old recipe and you think it's good, just wait. This one is even better. So first of all, let's do a review. t o m means To boil, and it's a prefix for soup. Ka is galangal, which is our main herb for today, and gai is chicken. So let's take a look at our ingredients. So let's first deal with our herbs. Our main character, our galangal. Now, galangal is a rhizome, very much like ginger. It looks like a ginger. It does not taste the same. You can, you cannot substitute and expect the same result. But if you want to substitute ginger, and just bear in mind that it's going to taste a little different. So you want to cut rounds, about thin rounds. We're going to do 10. Okay. So I've got 10 rounds now. Galangal has a flavor that I like to say it's very much like a mm, a pine forest after the rain is what I like to say it. So we've got that. We've got 10. You know what? This is small. This is a pretty small galangal. I'm gonna do a little extra. Okay. So the next one is our lemongrass. So lemongrass. Pretty straightforward. We'll do one stalk, and I'm just going to review how to prep this. The store cut it for me like this, but you might get a whole one, which is about twice as long. We don't want to use the top half because that's very weak. You can keep it for stock. We're just going to use the bottom half. Just smash it. Oops. Cut off the end. Take off the outside bit, which is usually dirty or dry. Cut this into chunks. So we smash it just to help the aroma release itself into the soup, okay? Because all the flavor molecules are locked inside those cells. So you want to break them free, okay? And finally, kaffir lime leaves. So the three important herbs: lemongrass, galangal, and kaffir lime leaves. They also come dry, so those work quite well. Just add a little bit more. Um, I'm just gonna leave them until when we're ready to throw them in, and I'll just tear them directly into the pot. Okay, so there's that. And next, the chilies. Now, this is not supposed to be a very spicy soup. Normally, it's mildly spiced. So the chilies, you don't want to chop it too fine. You just want to either bruise them or cut them into big pieces and let the spice gently infuse into the soup. You can leave it out entirely if you want. This is not like tom yum soup. It does not need to like kick you in the butt when you eat it. Okay, so I've just got those. And then finally, our vegetable mushrooms. Traditionally, we use straw mushrooms for this. I don't have straw mushrooms, not fresh ones anyway. There's canned ones, um, but oyster mushroom is another really common choice. I love oyster mushrooms in this. Just tear them into bite-sized pieces, or you can also do these mushrooms, which are becoming quite popular these days. They're beach or shimeji mushrooms. They come in brown and white. You can use either one. It's got a similar flavor and texture to oyster mushrooms, and that is. Pretty much all as far as ingredients go. We're just ready to go and cook our soup. So the major difference between this recipe and last one, major improvement, is I'm going to use chicken stock instead of water as a base. Now water is something you know if it's if you want to pull the soup together quickly, it's fine. But if you use chicken stock, the soup will be that much better. If you don't know how to make chicken stock, um, I have a video for how to make pork stock. Chicken stock is exactly the same. Just use chicken bones instead of pork bones. Um, try to not use store-bought stock because one, they'll be quite salty, and then you also get all sorts of other flavorings and things like that, that they like to add. So a homemade stock is the way to go. So I've got that. Boiling, and then we're gonna add salt, just a teaspoon of salt to season the soup. Ooh! And then when this comes to a boil, I'm gonna add the chicken. Now I'm using chicken thigh, chicken dark meat, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it braise for 20 minutes until the chicken. Whoa! Becomes fork tender, and it has time to absorb all that salt that we just add. So the chicken itself 
becomes seasoned all the way throughout rather than you know being a piece of bland chicken amongst this delicious soup outside. We're gonna let that go for, because they're small pieces, they'll only take 20 minutes and what you're going for is fork tenderness. Um, I don't recommend using breasts for this method. If you insist on using chicken breasts, I wouldn't brace it, just marinate it and add it to the end because braised chicken breasts, they don't have, the texture is a bit, it's not as nice as this because it's very lean. So we're gonna let that go at a simmer. Don't boil it or you'll boil everything away. So just at a low simmer and then we'll be right back. So our chicken is now nice and fork tender and even just the broth, I tasted it just now, that's a good chicken soup right there because we could use good chicken stock. Okay, I'm going to transfer it into a bigger pot because I don't think this will fit everything. Yeah, okay. Now we're minutes away from being done. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. We're going to add our coconut milk. Yeah. Herbs and spices. And we're gonna bring that back to a boil. Oh, and our fish sauce, which I'm gonna add most of it. So I've got two tablespoons here. I'm gonna add two, about one first, and then sort of adjust from there. The thing about soup is, oh no, I forgot to tear my, my kefir lime leaves. Tear your lime leaves before you drop them in. <laughs> What was I saying? The thing about soup is when you let something simmer for that long, you don't actually know how much liquid actually evaporated and that'll affect how much salt you need to add. So I'll save some for final adjustment. And also a teaspoon of sugar, just a little bit. You don't want this uh, palm sugar. You don't want this soup to be super sweet. You just want to round off the salt and the acid as per usual. I'm gonna bring that back to a boil and let it simmer for just a few minutes. It doesn't take that long to infuse these herbs. What I'm gonna do to rescue my <laughs> lime leaves is I'm gonna cut them <laughs> with scissors. So at least it'll, you know, help them infuse a little bit. That should do it. So the soup's been infusing. Now that you can really smell it, go in with the mushrooms. And the mushrooms really don't take very long to cook. It's like a minute or so. Yeah. This is like the Thai equivalent of chicken noodle soup. It's great when you're sick and it's even better when you're not sick. Okay, and now is the time you taste it. You want to do your final adjustment when everything's been added because the mushrooms will give off some liquid and all that stuff. So now everything's in, we're going to taste for salt. I'm going to go in with just some of my remaining fish sauce, maybe not all. Do one final taste. Perfect. So that was about a tablespoon and a half. So my mushrooms cooked, everything's cooked. One last ingredient is lime juice. So I'm gonna turn it off because I don't wanna cook my lime juice. Not all of it either. Give that a taste. Now, unlike tom yum soup, you, this soup does not need to be super sour. The sour is sort of secondary. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Mmm! Mmm! Yeah, and the spicy is just there tingling the back of your throat. Let's go plate it up. Mmm! I can't wait. So all these herbs, all the galangal, lemongrass, kefir lime leaves, they are traditionally left in the soup, but they are not meant to be eaten because it's very chewy. You'll have a hard time trying to eat it. So you can, if you're serving this to guests who are not familiar with these herbs, you want to at least tell them or remove it altogether after it's done infusing. So what I would do if you want to remove it is I would put them in cheesecloth and when it's done, pull out the whole cheesecloth or just let it sit in the little strainer and then just lift off the strainer. Um, but it's prettier if you leave them in there because you know you can visually see what's in the soup. It's pretty, but it's not worth, you know, having your guests choke on these things. We're gonna garnish it a little bit with some green onions. You can also do cilantro, but I think green onions is nice. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The chicken is super tender. Don't even have to exert any effort, and it's so comforting. The flavor for this one, you really want it to be a nice, comforting balance. Not too strong in any of the sweet, salty, sour, and just a little bit of spiciness in the back of your throat. 
Mm. I almost want to have a cold right now just so I can heal myself with this stuff. So if you want to try this, let me know how it goes. You can contact me through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The recipe is where it always is on hotthaikitchen.com. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.